Official accident reports and eyewitness stories form the foundation of this video. November 22, 2003 showed on the calendar. Every day, flights were scheduled to Baghdad airport to serve American troops due to the conflict the U.S. had started under the pretense of delivering democracy to Iraq. American assault helicopters encircled Baghdad airport to guard the American soldiers from elements hostile to them in the area. With helicopters on continual surveillance of the region in case of an attack on the airport, American soldiers apart from the military flights, Baghdad airport had just one commercial jet on that day. It was a DHL cargo Airbus A300 freight aircraft. On the screen presently appears a genuine picture of the plane. Under an arrangement for delivery, the DHL cargo business had been carrying the mail of the American troops for six months. That day, the flight from Baghdad to Bahrain was booked. Should all have gone as planned. 24 years old, this jet belonged to DHL, a German logistics and courier firm. Eric was the Belgian flight captain, 38 years old. Just a year ago, he had been elevated from co-pilot to captain of the Airbus A300. Steve, a 29-year-old co-pilot from Belgium, was in the right seat. Just three months ago, the young co-pilot was married. Mario, an engineer and flight technician, sat behind the co-pilot and captain. From Scotland, flight engineer Mario was a family guy of 54 years age. After the Iraqi army fell, armed groups had seized many of its weapons at that period in Iraq. These long-range weapons were quite dangerous for aircraft at the airport. Turning now returned to the accident. At the start of the runway, the pilots granted complete engine power and authorization to take off. The aircraft sped on the runway in a brief moment, lifting with wheels off the ground. Within five miles of the airport, a rebel faction had arranged for the aircraft to depart. Furthermore, the flight crew had no idea of this strategy. The pilots started ascending at a sharp climb angle as a safety measure against any potential hazard around the airfield. The rebel group fired a missile from the ground as the jet was still ascending. About 8,000 feet, or roughly 2,500 meters, the missile struck the back of the left wing of the plane. The left side of the engine toward the tip of the wing was struck even if the engine was not exactly impacted. Along with starting a fire in the aircraft wing, the missile seriously damaged it. On every hydraulic system on the airplane, there was a pressure loss. Pilots lost control of vital components, including elevators and rudders, which are the most crucial pieces able to maintain aircraft under control due to the depressurization. The damage to the elevator causes the plane to go up and down, so it began to oscillate in nose down and nose up positions. Let's pause from the video momentarily. We work hard a lot to get videos ready. Like the video and follow the channel to help in return for the work done. Let us now return to the tail of the Airbus A300 that corrected the missile on its left wing. For the flight crew on board, events occurred in a flash. Starting to toy with the engine power, the captain and co-pilot felt they could take control of the plane by adjusting the throttle levers. I, in essence, the nose of the plane would raise and acquire altitude when they gave both engines power. Both engines would lose altitude when their throttle was turned off. By running just the left engine, they could guide the jet to the right. By running just the right engine, they could direct the jet to the left and remove the power from the left engine. Pilots typically undergo emergency training in simulators at specified intervals to understand how to handle likely situations. Nonetheless, neither of the pilots had tried this approach previously, nor had they ever come upon such an emergency. They thus lacked any idea of the duration it would take for the aircraft to react to their throttle demand. The pilots experimented with the throttle stick for 10 minutes learning how to control climbs and descends. The pilots started a right-hand turn and powered just the left engine to start the downslope toward Baghdad airport. The ground missile had broken off some of the left wing surface. The smaller wing surface produced less lift on the left wing. The plane turned left due to the lowered lift. Notwithstanding all the calamities, the pilots guided the aircraft to face the airport with the right directions. The captain instructed the flight engineer to lower the landing gear as the Airbus A300 was getting near the airport. Lowering the landing gear automatically was not feasible, though, since the hydraulic system was also used in that regard. 
engineers have created a manual procedure in case such hydraulic failure causes the landing gear to fail to deploy. Gravity let the flight engineer manually pull the lever and open the landing gear. Opening the landing gear of the already unstable aircraft, however, greatly raised the friction force, and the aircraft started to turn about. Once more out of control, the plane they had barely brought under control by adjusting the throttle levers following the shooting down was back. The plane's nose was fast rising. The airplane's speed was likewise dropping as the nose angle rose. When the aircraft was almost at a stalling speed, the captain pilot reduced the rising nose angle by dragging the throttle lever, therefore allowing the speed to decrease even more. Should the aircraft lose too much speed, it was quite likely that it would fall from the heavens. Luckily, the plane began to accelerate while the nose lowered steadily as the speed fell. The co-pilot then sensed still another issue. The co-pilot understood their altitude was too high to land and their distance from the runway was too short. The pilots intending to land on the 3 to 3 left runway could not provide so much height in a brief period. They so had to turn around and arrange a path back away from the airport. Conversely, the fire raging on the wing was relentless. They had little time left, for the fire would cause the wing to gradually vanish. Still, the pilots turned left and attempted yet another approach. 45 minutes later, once more approaching the runway, the pilots arrived at the ideal height. Turbulence once more rocked the aircraft and caused it to start to drop to the right when they were roughly 100 meters altitude. With the throttle levers, the pilots thankfully were able to bring the aircraft under control once more. They had, however, gone away from the runway centerline. They could not thus adopt a centralized strategy. On wheels, the pilots stayed on the left side of the runway, and soon after landing, they departed the runway and carried on across the ground. The flight engineer turned on the reverse thrust, a mechanism used to slow the aircraft down by producing reverse thrust in the engines as soon as the jet touched down. Nevertheless, the plane had already passed the asphalt runway. The dirt at the edge of the ground was dragging down the aircraft and causing friction on the wheels. Only after advancing 1,000 meters could the plane, slowing down significantly outside the ground with the influence of reverse thrusts, halt. The event did not cause anyone death or injury. Using the power disparity created by both engines, the pilots deftly managed to guide the aircraft and regulate its altitude. The loss of the hydraulic system of the aircraft caused them to approach the runway unstably and land sooner than they should have, as though the fire on the wing was insufficient. Still, the pilots were really good at controlling their circumstances. Following the event, the flight engineer and the pilots were given various honors for their landing accomplishment. Once more, back to the jet. Apart from damage on the wing, the airplane suffered since it veered off the runway. Serious engine damage was done when ground stones and gravel escaped into both airplane engines. After another repair in November 2004, the aircraft was put on sale. But it could not be sold, so the quite old plane could not be utilized once more. The Airbus A300 jet is still retired at Baghdad Airport today.